So today we're going to talk all about um, uh, what digital health is and some examples of it. But first of all, I'll just introduce myself. So I've been uh, working in digital health for about 15 years now. My background is as a medical doctor, and I now have two academic roles. One, I'm a clinical senior lecturer for the Department of Information Science at the University of Otago. And my other role is as a clinical researcher at the University of Oxford, uh, where I conduct research uh, about digital health in uh, Africa and Vietnam. So just a bit about my digital health research uh, to start off with. Um, so this is one of our projects that we're running in Kenya, and it's a smartphone app that healthcare workers can download to learn about how to manage uh, medical emergencies. Uh, they download the app onto their own smartphones, and then they get questioned about how they would manage a particular emergency in a virtual reality uh, hospital. We've also developed a virtual reality headset version of this um, application where you can go into a um, African hospital and uh, go through the steps of managing a, a scenario. For example, in this scenario, a baby's been born, uh, not breathing. You've got to choose the right bits of equipment and do the right things in the right order in order to save the baby's life. We also have a project where we're using uh, smartphone cameras to automatically uh, detect uh, your breathing rate and your heart rate. And we're using this to see whether we can help diagnose uh, children with uh, whether or not they've got severe or, or less severe, non-severe pneumonia. Uh, and for children with severe pneumonia, they need to go into hospital and children with non-severe pneumonia, they can be managed uh, at home. So with this um, smartphone application, healthcare workers uh, can get some help in deciding whether or not uh, children will need admitting into hospital. We're also working in Vietnam, uh, where we're looking at how we can use um, new low-cost sensors and artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms uh, for looking after patients who are in intensive care units, so patients who are severely ill. And the reason for this is that uh, in countries uh, such as Vietnam, they might have ICUs, uh, but it's uh, difficult to equip them with all of the high-tech equipment we might have in a high-income country. And so we're looking to see whether lower cost sensors combined with uh, machine learning algorithms can provide the same kind of information for the clinicians looking after them as uh, more expensive types of equipment. So let's just think a little bit about what uh, digital health is all about. So um, at its kind of most basic, what we're talking about really is the digitalization of healthcare. So uh, traditionally, health um, doctors um, looking after patients would write their medical notes uh, in these paper charts, and you can see a kind of example of these. And you might have been to a doctor's office and seen uh, all the paper charts lined up on shelves behind them. Um, and uh, the kind of most, at its most basic uh, digital health is about how we turn these kind of uh, bits of paper into something electronic. Um, and this isn't just happening for paper charts, it's happening for all sorts of uh, ways we store and use information in healthcare. So if you're in a modern hospital now, there's uh, many different types of uh, information system in use. So we've got the electronic health record system, as I just mentioned. Uh, but we also might have a picture archiving communication system, which we use for storing uh, digital images, such as radiology images, so chest, chest X-ray or a CT scan. We also have a patient administration system that's used by the hospital administration for when you arrive at a hospital, see whether you're already registered, sort out all of your uh, basic information the hospital needs to look after you. In pharmacies and hospitals, they also have information systems now for keeping track of the stock. So what drugs they've got in stock and what they need to order and how they're dispensing um, various um, uh, drugs and keeping track of who they've been dispensed to and what the prescriptions are and that kind of thing. There's also uh, laboratory information systems. So these systems are used uh, in the hospital laboratory. So when a doctor orders a blood test, for example, um, that can be done through uh, the electronic health record, which could be linked to a laboratory information system. So when the blood sample arrives in the lab, uh, how it's processed and how it's tested is all um, stored in this laboratory information system. 
and the results generated by the system can then maybe be sent back to the electronic health record system. There's also systems called clinical decision support systems, and these often help doctors and uh, nurses and other clinicians as they're looking after patients. So you might have encountered this when you see a doctor, um, when they start prescribing your drug using the computer, they might see a pop up that says whether or not you're allergic to that drug. And that's uh, called a clinical decision support system. And they're not just used for uh, looking out for drug allergies, but they can also be used for guiding healthcare workers through the correct sequence of tests and um, diagnoses for particular conditions. There's also lots of other different types of systems used for different um, parts of the hospital, different types of clinics, different services. So for example, an uh, endoscopy clinic might have a particular endoscopy uh, system that stores the videos of the endoscopy, for example. And you can imagine lots of different types of systems are used in all sorts of different areas uh, of the hospital. So outside of the hospital, um, there's also uh, quite a growth in the use of digital health nowadays. So things like uh, downloading apps to your smartphone about your health. So this might be an app that you download that uh, allows you access to the hospital or family doctor's um, uh, electronic records that they have on you. So if you want to see uh, what the doctor said about your last appointment or whether or not there's been a prescription ready for you or something like that. Uh, quite often you can download an app now that will link to that uh, system. Uh, and there's also um, um, new technologies like the Apple Watch, for example, that have got healthcare uh, sensors built into them. So uh, this is showing how uh, the Apple Watch can detect your heart rhythm and see if there's any problems with that. And if there is a problem, it can uh, send you an alert and tell you about it. And also store that information on your smartphone. And now there's hundreds and hundreds of different smartphone apps helping people with all sorts of parts of their healthcare. Um, uh, whether or not that's involving the hospital and clinic or whether they're just uh, looking after their own uh, healthcare needs, staying fit and healthy or looking after their own long-term conditions. So how do we think about all of these uh, digital technologies and how they can help us uh, in healthcare? Well, one quote I quite like is from uh, Professor Mia Gray, who's a public health physician uh, in the UK. And he says that clean, clear water transformed healthcare in the 19th century and clean, clear knowledge will transform healthcare in the 21st century. So to get that knowledge, we need to gather the data that we need in order to make good decisions, either personally about our own healthcare or uh, good data for clinicians uh, to make decisions about how we should be looked after. And a nice concept for thinking about this is called a learning health system. So this is the idea that as all of these digital technologies are implemented uh, in hospitals and healthcare systems, we can use the data that they generate to improve the type of care that we give to patients. So as the data is gathered in the electronic health record system and the laboratory information systems, we have a way of gathering that data, analysing it and looking at the data to see whether we can improve processes in healthcare and making the whole healthcare system uh, better for patients. So now I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, current developments and trends in healthcare um, in digital health. Um, so first of all, um, digital health is... Um, not really been around as long as uh, digitization in other industries. So over the last uh, 10 or 15 years or so, we've really moved from a situation where hospitals and clinics were mostly paper-based to being uh, mostly digitized now. And this came about largely because of, in high income countries, at least because of government programs. So for example, in the US, the government um, started a program just after the global financial crisis in 2009, um, as part of their stimulation for uh, restoring the economy. And they invested $25 billion in uh, promoting electronic health record adoption in hospitals. Uh, in a similar way, the UK uh, from around 2005 started to invest heavily in digital uh, technologies in hospitals and spent about 10 billion uh, pounds uh, developing an electronic health record system. And following on these types of big kind of incentive programs, hospitals have then taken it uh, on themselves to adopt programs 
and uh, nowadays it's quite rare to find a hospital that's not got a fairly large level of uh, digitization. And you can see how quickly this uh, happened. This was um, uh, some of the data that the US government gathered during the process of that uh, big investment. And this is not saying that hospitals prior to 2011 didn't have any clinical or any IT system, but it's just that uh, after the program, they started to use those IT systems much more for clinical care of patients, as opposed to just the kind of routine management of the hospital or working out um, how to do insurance claims and things like that for patients. Outside of government investment, there's also been a huge amount of private investment, particularly in the last few years uh, following the coronavirus pandemic. So you can see there's been a kind of gradual growth of, um, this is a chart of venture capital investment in new digital health startups. And you can see that um, uh, that figure has grown and grown in recent years, uh, up to many, uh, up to nearly $30 billion of investment uh, last year. And one of the things that uh, healthcare systems have had to grapple with as the growth of these digital technologies has taken off is how to pay for them. So they're slightly different technologies to um, how we might think about the things we normally spend money on in healthcare. Um, and one of the big problems is some of these kind of more innovative um, applications such as um, artificial intelligence systems for helping clinicians make diagnoses. So um, normally uh, if a doctor wants to take a CT scan or order some kind of blood test or prescribe a drug, there's a mechanism for being the hospital being able to be paid to cover that cost uh, involved in doing that. And uh, over the last few years, there's been a lot of discussion about how if you've got, for example, an AI system for helping um, diagnose a stroke uh, on a brain CT scan, uh, how does the company that developed that uh, get paid? And uh, recently, that's just started to be paid for in a similar way to uh, how we would pay for things like normal um, tests and examinations. Um, We've also seen during the kind of coronavirus pandemic, um, a shift away from uh, patients attending doctors in person to using digital technologies uh, to have consultations um, with their healthcare professionals. So this is just a graph of how um, um, during this kind of period of the pandemic and the lockdown, how the change shifted from in-person appointments with general practitioners or family doctors in the UK to having uh, remote uh, consultations um, or not in-person consultations. So this could be over the phone, but also could be using something like Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams uh, to have that consultation. And this has been quite a dramatic shift and changes quite a lot of how we think about how healthcare is delivered. And the McKinsey and Company, the management consulting uh, company, did some um, uh, kind of analysis of what this means for healthcare spending. Um, and they said that something like 20% of all of the uh, visits um, that the US government pays for through their Medicare and Medicaid uh, programs uh, could be shifted to virtual consultations. Uh, which equates to about $250 billion worth of uh, healthcare spending. So you can see that digital health is going to have this really crucial uh, role for how we practice uh, medicine and run our healthcare systems uh, into the future. So that was just a little bit of an introduction to uh, digital health and telehealth and what that's all about. Um, and so it'd be really nice to see your um, uh, thoughts about that. And if you could just um, say who you are and what your background is and why you're interested in digital health and maybe if you've got any questions about what I've been saying uh, you can post it in the comments uh, below the video. Okay thanks very much.